Hey YouTubers, I'm going to give you a quick video review of the PA speakers I've been DJing with for the past few months. They are JBL's SRX 835P and JBL's SRX 828SP. And recently within the last month I've added a second 828SP. And the reason for that is the 835s easily overpower one 828 when set to be used with a subwoofer. Music quality on these is outstanding. I was not able to find one flaw until I had them for two months actually. And it wasn't a flaw with the tops. The tops have excellent response, excellent range, and they sound absolutely amazing. The issue is with the 828s. And it's not a big issue, and I thought it was just a fluke, actually, when I had the first one. But the second one exhibited the same quality. Uh, the frequency response graph on JBL's site is actually, I'm not going to say unreadable, but it's pretty pretty crowded, and it's very small. So it doesn't give you a really accurate frequency response chart or graph. Uh, the issue I was having with the 828s, together they sound absolutely amazing. Uh, I was not expecting this high fidelity of a sound, this much punch, this much power. Uh, honestly, I came from QSC's K-Series, the K-12s and KW181 subwoofers, and these just put those to shame. I recently sold those simply because this is the end-all for PA speakers for me, in all honesty. Yes, they are larger. But I have the means to transport it with a pickup. These all fit in a pickup bed nicely or they'll fit in a trailer with all the stuff I have to take to a gig. So it's not that bad of a deal. Um, anyway, on to the issue with the 828s as far as frequency response goes. For some reason, when set to SRX top or any of the presets, they fall flat right around 48 hertz. And I could not figure out why. Luckily, using the Audio Architect software, you're actually able to bump that flat spot up and uh, make it fill in. But it was really odd because I was noticing a lot of the thicker bass lines, EDM, hip hop, rap, etc. What it was doing was is it sounded punchy, but it didn't sound full. Like you could tell there was a hole there for some reason. I could not, could not for the life of me determine what it was until I ran a frequency sweep over it with a decibel meter. And I was like, oh wow, that's interesting. 40, between, I want to say 52 and like 46 or 44 hertz, there was, a, there was a hole. Very noticeable hole. And you can't tell this from JBL's graph. So what I did was, is I set the, uh, the EQ and the Audio Arch Architect software, I had set that up to fill in that hole basically where the decibel meter setup was falling out. It's just a, uh, I want to say I EQ'd it at 48 uh, plus 10 decibels with a Q or bandwidth of, I think it was 20 or 25, and that filled it in perfectly. Why that 48 hertz hole is there, I don't know, but luckily they were able to be EQ'd out and now it's flat across the entire range. If not, the bass being a little more thick and rich, which really is what I was looking for. And it was odd, I didn't notice this until, like I was saying, the second month, until I was like, you know, something, the, the music sounds awesome, but something is missing for some reason. So if any of you have that issue, if any of you have any questions regarding it, I can kind of walk you through the process. It's, it was really simple. It's literally just going into the software, bumping up the 48 hertz range, and then calling it a day. Aside from that, I could not be more impressed with these speakers. Um, like I said, audio quality is absolutely outstanding. Build quality is outstanding. Uh, the finish on them, I really like that. It's a, a Line-X finish. The only deal with the finish is that it does say, if you're carrying it around or you move it, it, it doesn't show scuffs, but as you can see right here, it shows uh, dirt dust quite readily. Not sure why that is. Probably because it's kind of like a derivative of vinyl or something like that. They're easy to clean off, though. It's a little damp. Damp microfiber cloth. They clean up really nice. They haven't chipped at all or anything like that. Uh, the grills, I've got a couple, not dings on them, but a couple spots where I've had to fill it in with a black paint marker just because for... I mean, I, I haven't hit the grill, but for some reason it seemed like it was chipping. No idea why, but like a little chunk would come off, so I just filled it in with a paint pen. I can't even tell where I did it now. Not that big of a deal. Uh, they look great, sound great. I couldn't be happier with them. The, the only thing, like I said, the tops just absolutely blew me away. In and of themselves, they can hold their own, honestly, with a 15-inch woofer when set to main mode. Uh, if, But I'm a bass head, so I needed the, needed the thumps. Uh, set those to main mode and you can really crank out a backyard party. No issues whatsoever. You have the whole neighborhood either partying or complaining, one of the two. Uh, but you add one 828, it's a game changer. You add two, it's just literally a wall of sound. And the way I usually set these up now is I'll have the, uh, right now obviously they're all stacked up saving space in my garage, but I'll party here and it, uh, you know, saves space. But usually I'll put one 835 on top of an 828, one on the left side, one on the right side, maybe, uh, Keep the 835s angled straight, if not a little bit inward. And they have a wide enough coverage where it's, uh, you don't really have any gaps unless you're literally standing right at the front. But uh, you can angle them in and that solves that problem. But literally with all the features these have, the raw power, the clarity, 
the fidelity you cannot go wrong with these granted yes they are a little pricey but in all honesty you get what you pay for in my opinion in my experience so I would say these are definitely a buy if you're in the market for a new set of PA speakers. The biggest downside to them, they are freaking bulky. I can maneuver them and transport them myself, but large size, large sound, so you have to make some sacrifices. Um, yes, they do make the SRX 812s, 815s, and those are a little more portable, but in all honesty, I would still go with these. It's just plain and simple just power power and clean sound I mean there's no there's no hiss coming out of the no audible hiss coming out of the uh, the high frequency horns if you get up right next to it, you can hear the slightest of white noise and that it regardless that is the quietest I have ever heard a PA speaker anyway I've been idle. rambling for a while uh, these definitely get my stamp of approval I know that doesn't say much but for what it is these are absolutely outstanding units and I would not hesitate to buy them again and in fact I'm thinking about possibly adding more speakers to this but we'll see time a quick view of the back panel here it's pretty self-explanatory you can see what everything is as I go down in here nothing really to explain and they're off right now otherwise this light would be on and the screen would have something displayed if you were Look to touch the side control. of the speaker if you could make this out Nice same finish. The actual fitment of the grill to the enclosure itself is spot on. I mean up here you got a little bit of wonkiness going on, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't protrude, doesn't snag on anything. It's really really clean installation of the grill. It fits really well. Handles, nice and beefy. You can grab them from below, above, doesn't really matter. They have like a uh, rubberized feel to them. Pretty nice. And I'm not gonna play any music for this review because honestly this cell phone camera wouldn't do these things justice. If you can demo these or find somebody with them, my recommendation is listen to them, feel them, feel their just power. That's that's the only way I can describe it. For a, for a speaker with a built-in amplifier, you would be amazed.